A Great Reset update. King Charles announces a bizarre new plan to turn Mother Earth into Mother Earth Goddess. The Magna Carta is out, and the Terra Carta is in. Speaking of weird, Pope Francis heads to Kazakhstan, and under the Pyramid of Power, says all religions radiate a special light. Nano Nano, and may the Force be with you. And finally, Bishop Athanasius Schneider is criticized for cooperating with Pope Francis. But what really happened in Kazakhstan? Hello again, ladies and gentlemen. I am Michael Matt, and this is the Remnant Underground. Quick bit of housekeeping tonight. If you are still watching us on YouTube, please be advised that Remnant TV has been demonetized a long time ago, and that those ads that you see popping up all over the place on our videos, those are not our ads. That's just YouTube ripping us off, making money, and while refusing, by the way, to allow us to make money off our own content because they say it's hateful and dangerous to the community or whatever. So if you're sick of those ads, please spread the word. They're not our ads. And then go over and watch our stuff at remnant-tv.com. Or better yet, just go directly to the source, remnantnewspaper.com. And remember, we are a newspaper first and foremost. In fact, this is the latest issue, hot off the press, great, great edition. It's got a whole section on Ukraine, which is very important right now. If you're not subscribed to this, well, you're missing out. And also, if they ever do throw us off YouTube and Facebook and all these other crazy little places online, who cares? Because we have got you covered. They can't monitor this. They can't, uh, you don't need to charge it. It's a newspaper and it's our way of staying in touch with you no matter what happens. So, the long story short, go to remnantnewspaper.com to watch our videos as well. And while you're there, you're gonna see all sorts of new stuff. We put up new articles, I don't know, three, four, five times a day, constantly updating that site. So, uh, that's the best thing to do. If you're sick of YouTube, sick of all of it, just remnantnewspaper.com. We'll take care of it. So, I've got a lot to get to tonight. Some of which, well, we're going to talk in a minute here now about um, the situation with, with the Pope, with Bishop Schneider over in Kazakhstan. Uh, but some of you asked me if I'd be commenting on the passing of Queen Elizabeth II. Um, and I, I'm just, I'm amazed. Are you guys amazed? I'm, I have never seen anything like this. I cannot believe the excitement, worldwide excitement going on over the passing of this, of this monarch. Um, it's almost like everybody whether they want to admit it or not, are monarchists at heart, wouldn't you say? I mean, it's really, really something to see. So I'm, I'm a little torn. I'm not going to come out here as an American and just list my grievances about that family, that royal family, or what's been done to the monarchy, you know, almost as if that, that, that particular House of Windsor was propped up now through the, the age of democracy to kind of show a really ineffectual side of monarch. I don't know what the conspiracy might be. I got a lot of questions, but now the queen is dead. So let's pray for her soul. And again, I really, somebody sent me a, a tweet that's been going around from a, from a Brit uh, who's had a little too much of Americans mocking the British for, you know, going so deep on the passing of the queen. And so she writes in this tweet, Dear Americans who mock us for mourning our beloved queen, she dedicated her entire life to her duty and our country even just two days before her death. You, on the other hand, mourned a man who pointed a gun at a pregnant woman by burning cities to the ground. We are not the same. <laughs> Pretty much says it all. Fair enough. I will leave it at this then. God bless the queen, you know, God, God save the queen. May God be merciful to the queen. And on the other hand, and in the same breath, <laughs> beware of the king, her son. Beware of King Great Reset the third. You know, down here in the underground, we've been warning against Prince Charles for a long, long time, friends. So please don't let the emotion of the moment carry you to give this guy a, a free pass because he does not deserve one. He is not your friend. In fact, I would say that Prince Charles and Pope Francis, respectively, were the temporal and spiritual rulers who locked us all down. That's what they did. That's what Charles did. Remember this? Today, we are all keen to hear from His Royal Highness his mission for a more cohesive and sustainable world. 
global crises like pandemics and climate change know no borders and highlight just how interdependent we are as one people sharing one planet. I've been encouraged to see the growing calls for a green recovery. We, start, we need only look to the United Nations Secretary General, to the IMF, uh, the EU, the Petersburg Climate Dialogue, the Canadian government, the COP26 universities network, and business leaders around the world to see this. And as we move from rescue to recovery, therefore we have a unique but rapidly shrinking window of opportunity to learn lessons and reset ourselves on a more sustainable path. Klaus Schwab, well, he already has a pope, and now he's got a king in his pocket, so be careful. The interdependence between human health and planetary health has never been more clear. As we start a new decade, it is time to focus on the future we wish to build. To that end, building on my Sustainable Markets Initiative, I am launching the Terra Carta as the basis of a recovery plan for nature, people and planet. More than 800 years ago, the Magna Carta inspired a belief in the fundamental rights and liberties of people. As we strive to imagine the next 800 years of human progress, the fundamental rights and value of nature lie at the heart of the Terra Carta. I am calling on CEOs from around the world to engage and play their part in leading the global transition. To guarantee our future, we have no other choice. <laughs> God protect us all from the king of the New World Order. Speaking of the Great Reset, well, let's go, let's get into this a little bit because this is, this is serious. Pope, Pope Fran, I'm, I'm, I'm going to just set this up a little bit. I want to talk about Bishop Schneider uh, and I want to talk about what it actually means when we say go underground, keep the faith, you know, never surrender in, 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 the, in the church and how that it can be reconciled with authority and what we're all trying to do here. So Pope Francis, you know, he's whipping around Kazakhstan this past week in his Prius, right? Well, he was driving his Prius so everybody could see the Prius, and he takes his Prius, and as you'll see on your screen, he drives it up to his jumbo jet, and, and he takes off. So apparently he drives the Prius to show how green he is, right? And then he, you know, hops out of the Prius, gets onto the jet airplane to show how meaningless the Prius is. And that's just the way things go now. Stupid on steroids. But there you have it. And it's so rude. It really is rude. When you think about this guy, he's so sick. He's, he's in a wheelchair. Do you know what it's like? I used my father was you know, more or less handicapped at the end. Getting him an in and out. We actually got an, like an SUV so that we could more easily transfer him, you know, because he was, he was getting old. I can't even imagine sticking my father in the back of a Prius. So why Francis is insisting on doing this to his people, I have no idea. But I mean, everything's a show with this guy. Anyway, he was in Kazakhstan for the what they call the Seventh Congress of Leaders of the World and Traditional Religions. Yeah, you've all seen this before. You know what it was. We don't have to quote it too much. I'm sure you were all glued to your TV set anyway to watch that, that world summit of the world's religions, right? Pope Francis' message uh, today to the religious leaders was that the religion is not a problem, but actually a part of the solution. He also said that uh, to combat the world's crisis, we must care. He stressed that um, as long as inequality and injustice continue to proliferate, uh, there will be no end to viruses, even worse than COVID-19. He said that uh, God is peace. He said that uh, every human being is uh, sacred, but each day children born and unborn, um, migrants and elderly are cast aside. And this is because of indifference. Uh, really, really exciting stuff. Francis is doing it again. Isn't that exciting? Wow, boy, that's really something. Pop the corn, kids. Francis is doing a cool show again over there in Kazakhstan. So stupid, right? And this building, what is this building? 
What is this? It looks like something out of Star Trek. And so under the pyramid of power, Francis urges the world religions to involve women and young people in the quest for peace. <laughs> Hang on a second, stop the, stop the tape. Back, back that up for a second, Walter. Take that back a bit, I wanna see that again. Oh, really? Really, isn't that interesting? So it's okay for Francis to kiss the Orthodox guy's holy stuff, right? But it's not okay for us to kiss Francis's holy thing, namely Peter's ring. I just, what the heck? How, what? There's Francis kissing the thing. That's that's fine, Fran, as long as it's another religion. That that's 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 great. He's so so anti-Catholic, this guy. But anyway, in case you missed it, Francis was over there then at the meeting and under the pyramid of power, defending everyone's right to religion, everyone's right to heaven, because every human being if they are in contact with the divine, can radiate a special light in our world, says Francis. I don't know, Tess, are you radiating a special light in our world? Because I know I am. Anything? <laughs> it doesn't mean anything. No, it means nothing at all. The more meaningless, the better, because then people will go, wow, man, that must be so deep. I don't even get it. That's awesome. That's not a real thing, but keep trying. Keep talking. You know, I was watching Francis's uh, Twitter feed all during this visit to Kazakhstan, and, and <laughs> it, was, it was pretty funny. It, it, I, I don't know. It was, like, it was like reading the text messages of a pothead powering through a, ba a bag of fortune cookies. It was so bad. And, like, I don't think Francis is writing this stuff, so I don't even care if that sounds ir irreverent or whatever. I don't know who the little 23-year-old metrosexual it is that's writing Francis's Twitter feed. But this was particularly bad this time. Like, may we realize that only together in dialogue and mutual acceptance can we truly achieve something good for the benefit of all. Confucius say, person who runs in front of car gets tired. Person who runs behind car gets exhausted. Network TV, didn't, nobody covers it, nobody cares. Other than the one thing that happened that really is important to talk about, and I wanna, I wanna close out tonight's show with this. Bishop Athanasius Schneider, who made headlines worldwide by warning, uh, warning the world that the Pope's event could give what he calls dame, the dangerous impression that the Catholic Church is part of a supermarket of religions rather than the one true religion. Now, I, I want you to follow this. This is extremely important. I, I want you to remember, this is an auxiliary bishop from Kazakhstan. All eyes are on him. The world press is on him. Everybody's looking at him. The Pope's coming to town. And Bishop Schneider says that the Seventh Congress of Leaders of World and Traditional Religions could, what he could, quote, undermine the uniqueness of the absoluteness of Jesus Christ as Savior and our mission to preach Jesus Christ to all nations, to all religions. This is Schneider. And that's exactly what happened. We didn't hear much about Jesus Christ. We just heard about all religions going to the happy place together, united and radiating light. But, but Schneider, again, Schneider's the standout here. Referring, I think now, directly to the World Economic Forum, Bishop Schneider adds that such global events now that Pope Francis was leading could be, quote, used by the political elites for their purposes because such events signal that Catholicism is one faith among others with equal legitimacy. This is not correct, says Bishop Athanasius Schneider, because there is only one true religion, which is the Catholic Church founded by God himself, but commanded 
to all men, to all religions, to believe and accept his son, Jesus Christ, the Savior of the world. Do you realize what he just said? One bishop standing against <laughs> the entire world with the Pope at the top, saying, no, Jesus Christ is the only Savior of the world. I'm going to talk about the ramifications of this, but I want that to sink in all by himself. One man against the world, a lonely voice of one bishop speaking out for Christ. And he says, he does it with a smile. Have you noticed this? I know this man. I've met this man. I've interviewed him many times. And I'm telling you, I've never come away from a meeting with Bishop Schneider without thinking I probably was just in the presence of a saint. And I do not say that of many people. So he does all this with a smile. And then he tells the press, rather than scandalizing anybody, he tells the press, he says, brotherly love, brotherly love mandates that I publicly raise these objections. So Bishop Schneider reminds the world that bishops are not the employees of the Pope and that it was out of brotherly love that he felt obliged to resist Francis's agenda. Can you imagine the courage that this took? But for Bishop Schneider, it was a no-brainer. He's going to stand with God no matter what. It was, I, I guarantee, I haven't talked to him about this, but I guarantee it was just like, of course, of course that's what I'm going to do. And so consequently, I was really kind of surprised to see that, you know, just a handful, not a lot, but a handful of traditional Catholics were all upset of over this. They were out there on social media attacking Bishop Schneider for taking part at all in the papal visit. And I feel bad for these traditionalists because you'd think they would look at the image of Bishop Schneider with Pope Francis and say, he's one of ours. This is awesome. Let's watch this. He's one of ours, right? That's a natural thing. He's been at the Catholic Identity Conference year after year after year. He's at the traditional mass at Chart. He's been with us for, for a long time now, Bishop Schneider. Put some links down below of the interviews that I've done with him in case you haven't seen them. So this is strategy, friends. We need to recognize strategy. We need to recognize genius when we see it. And that's what Bishop Schneider was doing over there in Kazakhstan. Genius strategy. Charitable strategy. This is an active ministry bishop of the Catholic Church. Standing in front of the world cameras now, the press, telling the world the Pope was wrong. And guess what? The Associated Press picked up Bishop Schneider's intervention and broadcast it all over the world, friends. <laughs> I could do a, a, a two months of this show every night complaining about Kazakhstan and what the Pope said under the pyramid of power, and it wouldn't matter. It wouldn't matter at all compared to what one bishop was able to do this past week, and yet it was missed on some of our traditionalist friends who want Bishop Schneider to say it like it is, like he's some kind of stupid blogger with nothing to lose. He's got everything to lose, friends. He's not even in my position. I can say what I want here. Nobody's going to come in here, at least not yet, and throw me in jail for it, or take away my position, or take away my kids and my wife, right, for saying the wrong thing. Bishop Schneider is sitting there right now looking at the possibility of losing everything if someone were to decide to crack down on him for standing up against the Pope. And the traditionalists were criticizing him on Facebook? Are you kidding me? People were sending me this, this photo just yesterday as though it was some scandal for a bishop of the Catholic Church to greet the Pope in Kazakhstan. I don't care if you don't think he's the Pope. That doesn't matter. This is the guy in white. This is the man the world recognizes as the Pope. What do you think Bishop Schneider was supposed to do in this situation? Boycott the entire thing. I am not going to have any part in this. Oh my gosh, Francis, Team Francis would have been thrilled if Bishop Schneider had done that. <laughs> Oh my gosh, friends, that's beating Francis at his own game, you see? It's brilliant. And yet people are, again, on Facebook, yeah, well, this guy offered the new mass, too. <laughs> then we can dismiss the whole message that he sent out through the Associated Press to the entire world. Who cares? 
he's a bad guy. Ha <laughs> ha. I'm down in my little depressing corner again where everything is terrible. It's like they wanted to find something they could throw at Bishop Schneider. What? what, what, what why? It is be precisely because of that, because Bishop Schneider is in the church, functioning as a bishop in the church, that his resistance is more powerful than almost anybody else on earth right now. He stood up against the entire Bergolian agenda in Kazakhstan, friends, whether some of our brethren recognize that or not. And guess what? In two weeks' time from right now, Bishop Athanasius Schneider will be the keynote speaker at the Catholic Identity Conference in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. And this week, He's showing the Pope around. And he's charitably telling the world where the Pope is wrong. <laughs> and everybody knows exactly where Bishop Schneider stands. If you didn't know that, come to the Catholic Identity Conference next week or watch his, his, his address from last year at the CIC. She was put in chains, our mother church, the holy apostolic see, by high-ranking churchmen who were consciously or unconsciously acting as emissaries of the anti-Christian powers of our time. Everybody knows where he stands. But in Kazakhstan, he was supposed to do what, according to some of these folks, these critics of his? What was Schneider supposed to do? He's supposed to snub the Pope? He's supposed to flip him the bird? What was he supposed to do? You know, it doesn't make any sense. If he had done anything like that, the press would have had a field day disqualifying one of Francis's most outspoken critics in the world today. So friends, it's a really important point that I want to make. We have to get our strategy down. We have to, <laughs> we have to get it right. We have to understand who our friends are, right? When I, when, I, when I say that we are going to say that we must stay in the Catholic Church and fight for the Catholic ground, do you know what that means? It means, oh, that we must stay in the Catholic Church and fight for the Catholic ground. That's what it means. It means we need to stay in the church. What does that look like, friends? And I'm going to, I know I'm going a little long. We'll close on this. What do I mean by that? What does it mean? Do you go off and start your own church? Should I get myself a white pointy hat and become my own pope? Is that what I should do? No. Not, so when we say stay in the church, it means to whatever extent possible, we must remain functioning as Catholics in the church without compromise, without unjust or evil compromise. It may mean that we have to suffer along with the suffering church. And that's what I mean by we may have to go down and say mass somewhere, have mass somewhere privately, you know, with some priest who's been thrown out. When I was a kid, we, we, we went over to the Eastern Rite for a while. We suffered. We stayed in the church, but we suffered with the church. And there is a certain sense in which you have to go underground at some point to continue to have the sacraments. Bishop Schneider agrees with this, by the way. He has told the priests who are being told to stop saying the old mass to say it anyway. Find out how to, how to get that done. Say them, continue to say the old mass. So, 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 so where are we going to go if we leave the church? There's no place to go. There's only one church. We don't get to start our own. We don't get to crown ourselves bishops and, and popes. What, what do we do to, uh, to encourage people not to be seduced or not to be <coughs> so discouraged that you end up leaving the church and doing exactly what the devil wants is to, to abandon the church? Yes, <clears throat> this would be the, uh, the biggest mistake to leave the church because the church is our mother. How can you leave your mother. Uh, the church gave us the supernatural life, not the Pope gave us supernatural life, not the bishop, but the oh, Holy Mother Church, we say. And we have to say to the people, the church is greater than the Pope. And the thing is, I really want to leave you with this. We've been saying this a lot, and we're going to talk about this at the Catholic Identity Conference in a couple of weeks in Pittsburgh. Uh, which is sold out, by the way, but live streaming will be available. Priests, good priests, tradition-minded priests, who offered the new Mass back in the 1970s, these guys were victims of what was going on, they were absolutely among the most important pioneer traditional Catholics of the period. Not because they offered the new Mass, but in spite of it. 
And I, I just hope that you recognize names such as Father Vincent Michelli, Father Michelli, I'm sure <laughs> some of you old timers remember that name. He was a Jesuit, he was a lion traditionalist. He was a powerhouse of a priest, tradition-minded priest, right? Absolute traditional Catholic pioneer. He was, he was the reason, by the way, I went to Christendom College, a good friend of my father's, wrote for the, for the remnant, right? And he only started offering the Latin Mass exclusively in his retirement out there off just off Christendom College's ca campus in his retirement. He wanted to offer it a lot sooner, but he was in a position where he couldn't leave his, you know, whatever, he couldn't leave his situation. Lots of priests are that way right now. I know many of them. They've got four, five, six hundred families. They can't just leave their parish and go off and join the fraternity of St. Peter or something. So they're working things on. They're trying to keep the faith and keep tradition alive in their parishes, saying the most traditional mass, mass they possibly can, saying the occasional traditional Latin mass, moving in the direction of tradition. You see, they're, they're our friends. They're our allies. They may be our salvation someday. We don't want to alienate them just because they're not all the way here yet. There are diocesan priests all over this country who offer both masses right now who are moving fast in the direction of tradition. And if they do crush the traditional Latin mass, those guys are going to have some options, some solutions. They're, 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 they're moving towards tradition. They're offering the Latin mass whenever they can. Archbishop Vigano himself was offering the new mass when I first met him a couple years ago. Today, as a retired archbishop, he offers a traditional Latin mass exclusively. He's become a champion of the traditional Latin Mass movement. What if you had met him three years ago? Oh, you're, you're saying the new Mass? Would that, would that have been smart? We cannot alienate tradition-minded people, priests, bishops, who know that something is terribly wrong in the Vatican, in the church, in the world today, that would be suicidal to our movement to do that. Some people say, well, yeah, well, you got to join the SSPX. Join the Society of St. Pius X. Man, everything is fantastic over there. we got no problems. That's ridiculous. The SSPX is defending the church. They're not trying to set up some sort of goofy la-la land where everybody imagines there are no problems in the church. In or out of the society, the church is in dire straits right now. You know, the SSPX say they don't just want to have special permission for them to be able to offer the traditional mass. It has to be for the whole church. They're absolutely right. It doesn't make sense to say, I just want permission to say this and then I'm satisfied. And I, and I, I knew Archbishop Lefebvre. My father published him in, in this magazine, in The Remnant, 40, 50 years ago. I received the Sacrament of Confirmation from Archbishop Lefebvre. And I can tell you, he never wanted to break with the Vatican. He wasn't saying it like it is, telling the Pope to go to hell and all that. No. You only have one church. The Vatican is ours. The church is ours. You've got to find a way to fight from within. And by the way, his Society of St. Pius X is still out there right now, year after year, making every attempt to keep some kind of a relationship with the Vatican during the crazy period that we're all in. You see what I'm saying? Why are they doing this? Because they have not left the church, and they never will. And neither, neither will I. I'm not leaving the church. I've been attending, I've been attending with my family. I've got seven children. I've been attending my diocesan Latin Mass now for 40 years, you know, most of my adult life. My children were confirmed by diocesan bishops, such as the late, great Bishop Morlino, God rest his soul. Well, he said the new Mass. Should I have chastised him when he was offering the traditional rite of, of confirmation to my children? Tell him off and slap him? Tell everybody else what a sellout he is? We're in the middle of a revolution here, friends. And everybody's trying to figure out how to do this. My youngest son was confirmed most recently in the old rite by Archbishop Bernard Hebda, the current Archbishop of Minneapolis. I was proud to stand with him a few months ago when, when he was publicly celebrating the Dobbs decision. The only bishop that I saw out there in the streets of St. Paul publicly celebrating the end of Roe versus Wade. That went over big. He was getting heckled, you can imagine. <laughs> he took a stand. Well, he's no traditionalist, but he did the right thing. It was the right thing to do. I was proud to stand with him. He's my bishop, and when my bishop does the right thing, he will have no greater defender on the face of the earth than me. And that's the way we should all look at this. And does that make me a compromiser, like Bishop Schneider's a compromiser because he shook, he shook the Pope's hand? <laughs> Am I a compromiser too? <laughs> 
Do you know anybody on YouTube today who is resisting Francis more outspokenly to his globalist face than we are here at The Remnant? <laughs> Maybe, I'm sure there might be somebody, but uh, we resist pretty hard. And we're in the church and we pray for our bishops and we will stand with them when they do the right thing. We will follow them onto the battlefields when they happen to be Bishop Athanasius Schneider. You know, at this year's Catholic Identity Conference, we're going to be releasing our new documentary called Guardian of Tradition. My name is Philippe Christori. I'm the Bishop of Chartres. But they are not here to discuss Vatican II. They are not here to push a political agenda. They are here to reclaim their Catholic heritage. Mission is really important. Safe Catholic faith. The faith of their fathers. Offering up sacrifice to God. Okay, did, did, did you see that? That's Philippe the Bishop of Chartres. I'm the Bishop of Chartres. He's in a Remnant TV documentary. He was walking on that pilgrimage. Now, do you think he's a traditionalist? No, he's not a traditionalist. But he's the Bishop of Chartres, and we do what we can to influence him. That's what all of us are called to do. Pray for them. The, they are the bishops. Influence them. Do what we can and resist them if we must. That's what's meant by stay in the church. That's what's meant by resist. That's what's meant by loyal opposition. We stand for Christ. We stand with tradition. And, and, and we stay in the church. And why? Well, for one thing, look at how much they want to run us out of the church. Look at Traditionis, Traditionis Custodis for a moment. Now, that's Pope Francis. What does he want to do there? He wants us out of the church. So when we decide to go out of the church, start our own little deal, tick off our bishops, and just set up our own little shop somewhere, guess who's thrilled? They are. Francis is. That's what he wants. That's what Traditionos Custodis is all about. Drive them out of the church where they won't cause problems anymore. He wants to do whatever he wants to the church. And in order to do that, he's got to get rid of the impasse. He's got, got to get rid of us. <laughs> And we will not comply with him. And that's what the war is all about. That's what the resistance is all about. We resist him to his face, you see, for the good of the church, for, for, for tradition, for the souls of our church. You know, the, you know the drill. We stay in the church and we resist, which is why we thank God for somebody like Bishop Athanasius Schneider, who really knows how to do it well. He's in the church, but he's unafraid to resist Peter to his face. That comes right from Galatians. That's St. Paul. That's how Catholics fight in the church during a time of revolution like this one, when the devil is scoring a lot of points against the Bride of Christ. And like Bishop Athanasius Schneider, friends, here at Remnant TV, we will never leave the church, just as we will never stop resisting those in the church who would like nothing better than to destroy the church. Which means, Francis, we will either be your best defenders should you happen to return to the faith, or we will be your worst nightmare if you don't. And that's up to you. But we, traditional Catholics, we're not going anywhere. <laughs>